All right, you're here with Jason Miller, Master Beekeeper at Miller Honey Farms. And uh, we're in North Dakota, southeast part of the state for the summer. That's where our bees uh, spend their summer months. And what I want to walk you through is the honey production. You know, you've probably wandered through the grocery store, seen honey on the shelves. Hopefully you have some at home. And we're going to take you through in this multi-part series. This will be the first video in, in the series uh, from the flower to the table and where that honey comes from, what's the process behind it, and what all is involved. Hopefully you'll come away understanding that and hopefully uh, feeling like honey is actually a pretty good deal when you see everything that's involved in, in bringing it uh, from these flowers to the grocery store shelves. So the first thing I wanna talk about is choosing a location. Like I said, we're here in North Dakota uh, for the summer. That's where we've been coming since the 1970s. And my great, Excuse me, my grandfather chose this area because of the endless alfalfa and sweet clover fields that were out here back then. Over time, those crops have changed and we have a lot of corn and soybeans, uh, wheat, and less pasture land, which results in much smaller honey production and honey yields than what my father experienced during his lifetime. Uh, he typically would see anywhere from a 120 to 200 pound per beehive uh, honey yield. We're lucky if we get 40 to 50 pounds these days. And again, that's because of the landscape has just changed so dramatically from being uh, prairie land, uh, lots of alfalfa, lots of pasture, to uh, row crops consisting primarily of corn and soybeans. But where does the honey come from? So right here, all surrounding me is alfalfa. This is an alfalfa plant, the purple. They're really pretty and, um, and in bloom all around me. So one of the main sources of nectar for the honeybees out here is is alfalfa another big one is yellow and white sweet clover that's what's right here so it just grows wild um, and as you can see all these plants have many many small blossoms on them many small flowers and each one of those is filled with nectar for the honeybees to gather so that's why they yield um, one of the reasons they yield a lot of honey and a very light delicate uh, mild flavored honey is what you get out of the alfalfa and the uh, sweet clover. So that's what brings us out here. There are other crops that um, that are honey producers, buckwheat, sunflowers, uh, canola. So there are other row crops in the area that are planted, um, but the big sources for us are the alfalfa and the clover. So let me talk a little bit about this bee yard. This is what we call a bee yard. Uh, you're looking at 40 beehives uh, behind me. The reason for 40 is because our small trucks haul 80 hives and so we can haul two bee yards um, if we do two bee yards of 40. Now you're probably wondering why are they laid out in this circular pattern. Um, the primary reason, there's a few advantages to this circular layout. One is we could pull the truck right into the middle here and each of the two employees can work off one side of the truck and just kind of work around that semicircle on their side. Bees also tend to drift, and so if all the bees are clumped up in one big square, they can get confused on which one is their hive, which one is their entrance. If we orient the bees at different directions facing the sun, then the bees have a better navigational um, landmarks to look for when they arrive home, so we tend to get less drift into other hives. We still get a little bit, but this helps minimize it somewhat. And so that's, that's the main reasons that we lay them out in this circular fashion. You might also be wondering, what are these rocks doing on top of all the beehives? North Dakota is famous among things for its wind. It's very windy out here on a lot of days, including today. Um, and the covers will sometimes blow off. This is particularly bad in the late fall season when we have snowstorms, rainstorms, and high winds all combined. And, and that will be enough to often kill a beehive if the cover blows off and it's snowing and they fill with snow, the bees freeze out and die. So that's the purpose of the rocks um, in the yard. Now, if you'll notice over here, we have a sign at the entrance of the yard. This just identifies for us the yard number, uh, the owner, if somebody has a question or a problem or there's a concern, our contact information as well as our state beekeeper number. So we identify all of our bee yards uh, with that information, as well as the beehives have uh, our contact information stenciled on them. Now, as far as the structure of a beehive, what, what we've got here are two double deep. So this is, I should say, 
two, two deep boxes, one deep here and one deep here. So that is resting on a pallet, and on a pallet are four beehives. So looking here, we have four individual beehives, each one with its own queen, each one operating as its own colony. It's almost like a duplex. You got two, enter, you know, two beehives that enter from here and two beehives that enter from there, um, but they're all independent homes and colonies. And as I mentioned, these are double deeps. So um, we'll, we'll see in later parts of these series different size boxes and and uh, but I want to get you familiar with exactly what the standard beehive looks like as it arrives in the bee yard for honey production. All right so that wraps up kind of the basics of a yard layout and what the bees are foraging on as far as flowers. Next up I want to take you guys inside a beehive and for part two of the series we'll look at what are the different components, check the strength of the colony and have you guys prep to understand how the honey production is actually happening.